Hey, how's it going? So we're going to continue on over there. Next lesson here, we're going to talk about equations of sinusoidal functions and how this equation, this A, B, C, D formula here that we have here, how this can change our standard sine x graph. So just one second. So on the other side over here, I have a standard sine x graph. I'm just going to make that a different color here. Well, let me do that because it's in the way here. There we go. Uh, let's call it, let's put that green. Okay. So I have a standard sign X graph. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it on the different one here. At the top here, you can see I have one that says A, B, C, D, and I have a bunch of sliders here for all the different pieces. I can change these. So this is my regular graph. Uh, what I'm going to do here is in radians. I can put this in degrees. Let's put this in degrees for now. And I'm going to have to change a few things. So rather than going just to 9, I'm going to have to go a little bit larger than that. So let's go to about 500. You can see I get a little bit more. Maybe I'll go a little bit more. Let's do about that. That's my step is 360. How about that? Well, let's go 180. Uh, let's go 90. There you go. And let's go from 0. Okay. So here's my graph right now. You can see it goes from... My y-axis right here, you can see the negative part. It's going up, down, then back up. So it's about 360. So my period is 360. You can see the scale here. It's very hard to read. There's a 2 here. So my scale is going 1 here. So my max is 1, my min is 1. So my amplitude is 1. Okay. So I've got a period of 360, amplitude of 1. My midline is right down the middle. So that is uh, y is equal to 0. Okay. And what's my other characteristics do we have here? We have period, amplitude, my midline, and how much it moves side to side. We're not going to really deal too much about that one. So what I'm going to do for some of these, I'm just going to set them to zero before we start this. My D, I'll put that at zero for zero. Okay. So right now the graph's right on top of each other. You can't see it, but the graph is there. So there's that, right? There's the red graph, that one that we're going to change. The green graph is right on top of that one. So to change things on this, I'm going to change some of these parameters. It's A, B, C, D, and you're going to see what happens. So A is the number that's in front, right in front of the, the sign here. We're going to see what happens when I change that number. So I'm going to move that up. You can see what that changes is only how tall the graph is. It doesn't change where the x-intercepts are. So 180, 360, 450, or sorry, 540, 720, those numbers stay the same. This only changes how tall the graph is. We, we won't deal with negative numbers, but negative number kind of flips the graph over. We're just going to deal with positive numbers. So if the number is greater than 1, it increases my amplitude. If it's a slightly less than 1, it decreases my amplitude. But you also notice that this number, if I put a 4 here, it is 4. The amplitude is 4. It goes from 0 all the way up to the top there. My amplitude is 4. The top here, we got down here, we got negative 4. So that number in the front is my amplitude. So if I put down 2.4, my amplitude up there from 0 to 2.4, 2.4, negative 2.4. So this number in the front is my amplitude. That's pretty convenient. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to put this back to 1. Is my regular graph. Let's see what the B does. Actually, let's see what the D does. Let's go to the D instead. So the D is this one at the end here. I'm plusing the D. Okay, so what if I change that and put it right here? Three. Okay, so move the graph up. It plus three and move it upwards. But if I look at this midline now, there's a line that goes right down the middle. That midline is three. If I put that as a two. Oh, now the midline's two. It's right down that two line there. It's four. It's hard to do it, but it's four right there. It goes right down four. If I put a negative in here, it goes down. So negative four, my midline's negative four. So this, the A and the Ds are pretty easy. The A makes sense. The A is the amplitude. The number that is in front is the amplitude. And the D, you can see it just moves it up or down the same number of units. So if my, amp, if my midline was at zero and I moved it up, four units, my midline is now at four. 
So my A and my D's, my A is my amplitude, my D is my midline. Okay? So what we're going to do now, I'm going to take this, we're going to zoom in just a little bit if I can. Okay, there's my graph now. Okay, so I'm going to change this B value now. Now this one's a bit weird. It's a bit tricky. And that later on in the notes, we'll talk about how do we get the, the amplitude or the period now, because what this graph does, it changes the period. You can see it doesn't change where it starts. All right, it doesn't change where it starts, but it changes how long the graph is, how long one period takes to start. So if it's just one, the period is the same. Okay, so my B value is one, it stays the same. If my period is two, let's say that, or my B value is two. I put a two X there. You notice that now the graph goes up and down twice in the same amount of time it did before because the number is two. So same amount of time twice. So the period is actually half of what it was before. So it was 360, now let's go 180. If I put a four in there, you can see now, it's hard to see, but actually I can probably just zoom this out just a little bit. So here's one 360 part, there's 360. You can see I go one, two, three, four of them now in the same amount of time. So my period, is now a fourth. You can see it now it goes 90. Every 90, well, so it's one fourth of 360. It's 360 divided by four. So it's a fourth of what it was before. Uh, if I put a five in there, it means I can put five graphs in there. One, two, three, four, five in the same amount of time. So it appeared as one fifth of what it was before, which is one fifth of 360. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to a number I'm going to one, so one is what it was before. Here's one, same graph. I'm going to go to a number that's slightly less than one, say 0.5 or so. So 0.5 is like a half. Let me scroll this out just a little bit. Now you can see the red graph, the, the green graph, the original graph goes 360, but the red graph now stretches out a little bit more. Its period is now 720. The B value is a half, so that means it, it only does half a graph in the same amount of time that I used to do, but so that means I have to double it up to get to the full period over here at 720. Now, if I change that to a quarter of what it was before, so I can go one over four. If I go back here and say, I can only do a quarter in 360. That means I'm going to keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. Oh, now it's at 440, 1440, which is, oops. Which is 360 times four, right? So that's going to be important. So when the number is smaller than one, it actually stretches this graph out. When it's greater than one, it squishes the graph in. Okay, that's important. So we're going to see that. Uh, we're going to change that back to one now. So this is my regular graph, and the C value here moves the graph side to side. It's hard to see here because my C values are pretty small here. I can change my step here. Let's change my steps to 10. Okay. Oh, I'm going to change my max value here too. Uh, let's go 100. Oh, let's go 360. Ooh. 360. Now I'm going to go with negative 360. Okay. So here's my graph now. So by doing this, I can move the graph side to side. But you notice when I move the graph to side to side, it doesn't change the period. The period stays the same, but it just shifts it side to side. So we call this a phase shift. Now, the key part to this is my C value. If my C value is positive, you notice which way it's moving. It's moving to the left. If the C value is positive, it moves left. If my C value is negative, it's moving right. It's opposite what you think would happen. You think this would be the positive direction, but by changing this to a positive number, it's actually moving it the other direction. So we're going to look at those two. That's very important. Okay. Okay, so in our next video, the part two of this, we're going to go back here. We're going to look at the A, B, C's, D's again. But this time, we're actually going to find out what the numbers are, how do we calculate them. Some of them pretty easy. Like I said, the A value is the amplitude. The D value is the midline. Those are the same thing. The B value is a little bit trickier. The C value is even trickier after that, but we're going to create some equations in the next video, and I'll see you then.
Bye.